What's going on, everybody? It's your favorite Auntie Mo, and we are back, baby, for another episode review. This is Love After Lockup slash Life After Lockup, Season 2, Episode 22, The Schemiest Scheme Ever. Before we get into the review, if you have not done so just yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think of this video with a thumbs up or a thumbs down and hit the notification button so you will know whenever I upload new content, y'all. This episode was good. I haven't had, I, well, I haven't seen a good episode all the way through of Love After Lockup in a minute, but every couple's um, scene or a story, whatever, was really, really good, y'all. I'm excited about this review, so let's get right on into it. Y'all, so first off, we gonna start with Megan, Michael, and Sarah, right? So Megan is back and forth words. She's depressed, she's sad, and she's lonely. This half of sitting, looking back at pictures of her and Mike, she says her and Mike haven't talked since Mike called her and sent her a picture of his newborn baby. She's afraid that Mike is gonna get reeled back in with the new baby and he's gonna end up getting back with Sarah. Girl, what you should be worried about is moving on with your own goddamn life and not worried about what this nigga's doing with his babies and, and his wife and all of this shit, okay? You need to be worried about your damn self. That's just me, that's just my opinion and don't nobody really care about my opinion, but I'm just gonna give it anyway. Whole time, she's sitting up there depressed Sarah has already made it down to Flint, Michigan, right? She got a babies with her. She's, you know, fixing up the girls because Mike is on his way to come and see the girls. He's gonna see his new baby for the first time. I think his new baby's name is Rain. That's what it is, right? His baby girl, Avion, is so cute. She was saying how she wanted her hair to look and all of this, whatever, right? So Sarah is nervous about giving Mike these divorce papers. You already know. She, she seems like super weak. Like if he says something that just gets her all wet down there, then she's just gonna throw them divorce papers right on up out the window. Hopefully she don't. She sticks to her guns and she don't fall in for the bull crap or whatever, right? So, Mike comes in, Aviana is super excited to see him. She jumps in his arms. It wasn't like the first time because you know, she hadn't seen her daddy when he was locked up two years. The last time when he got out, she was scared of hell of his ass. But this time she was like, daddy, daddy, daddy. You know what I'm saying? It was cute or whatever. She went and jumped in his arms. Wanted him to come down and color with her and all of that stuff. It was real, real cute. I will give it to Mike. The way he was with his kids, I had to give it to him. It was so super cute. He was holding on to his newborn baby and being there like a daddy like you should be in this whole goddamn time. But that's neither here nor there. Let me keep my opinion to myself because I don't want nobody jumping out of my comments saying any goddamn thing about it. But, um... He tells Sarah that he wants to take her out to dinner because he wants to talk. And Sarah's like, well, you know, who gonna watch the kids? He was like, well, either my mom or daddy can watch the kids. And she was like, um, they gonna come over here? And I peeped that, though, because I'm a mama, too. When she asked, uh, they coming over here? In other words, my baby not going over there to whatever ghetto ratchet ass shit y'all got going over over there. Excuse me, excuse my language. I don't want nobody to get it twisted or nothing like that. You know, I'm a little ratchet myself, but being a mother of a newborn baby and little ones under two, three, four years old, uh-uh, they can come over here in my humble abode and watch them. But nah, my baby ain't going over there. Uh-uh. My baby ain't going over there. Now, at first, when he asked her out to dinner, shit seemed like it was cool or whatever, right? Then somewhere along the lines, shit just kind of got wavy. Because she was like, well, you know what? I really don't. I'm okay with not going. He was like, I'm okay with not going, too. She was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm done with the yada, yada, yada. So he... Baby, out of nowhere, he was like, you know what? I don't want my kids to be around this and see this. I think me and you need to get a divorce. Baby, they had Sarah ass looking like. When I tell you, and that's where it ended with their story, hopefully when the next episode airs, with y'all, I didn't even know the next episode is finna be the season finale for them. Cause it's a whole new episode, finna start with a whole new couple, and yes, I will be here giving the reviews for it. But um, hopefully on the next episode that they show, she like, all right, nigga, you on divorce? Sign them papers in, nigga, this is what we gon' damn do. But we gon' see from there, but then too, on the next episode, you see where Mike is saying he got a big secret or a big surprise he got for Megan, this, that, and the other, and you see the nigga in the car. So I think he gonna end up going to Fort Worth and surprising Megan. So Megan, you might get your wish, girl. You might get that deadbeat nigga, and y'all can live happily ever after. Girl. Moving on from there. Y'all, Marcelino and Brittany. 
So Brittany is pissed off at Marcelino. They on their way to her lawyer's office right now because exactly what she thought was going to happen is going to end up happening now. Now, Tito was pissed off. He's like, you know what? My mistake was even allowing you to have Gio this whole damn time anyway, which I should have had him under my custody. Now they finna have to fight for his ass. Now Marcelino ass feeling bad. And when Marcelino, y'all let me fix my shirt. That shit is crooked. You got me out of my thought for a minute. All Marcelino kept going back to was his childhood. He even says that it brought him back memories of when his stepdad took his brothers away from his mother and the grief and the stress that it caused his mother to go through. And see, Marcelino, that's the problem. You steady inserting yourself. And yes, I get it. That's your wife. That's your stepson. But you've only been in his life for a year a year since she got out of prison. Because before then, you didn't know you didn't know her son. Before that, you didn't know nothing about her. I mean, you knew of her having a son, but you didn't have no relationship with him until she got out of prison. So really, you need to respect the fact that she's trying to make shit work on her terms. Like she said, nigga, I had it. You done went and fucked up the church's money. Now I got to go and fight in court for my rights over my son, right? And so the lawyer, the lawyer was even irritated himself. The lawyer was like, you know what? I gave you options, which was plan A. You know what I'm saying? We can go about this the right way. Go through the courts like we had to do. We could sit down and have a civilized conversation. And then there was plan B, where you just went off and caused whatever ruckus you wanted to goddamn on cause. And then we got to deal with the consequences for them. So since you want to handle plan B, now we got to go to plan C. And we're going to have to fight this thing out. So later on, they end up having this little party in the park where all the family shows up. Her mom shows up. Amanda shows up. Her little ex. Her little green tips on her hair was cute. I like that. But, you know, Brittany is scared because she's like, tomorrow is when I start my custody hearing for my son. And who knows how tomorrow could go? Hell, you know how the goddamn justice system is. And like she's saying, her judge is very conservative. She goes by paperwork. And what it says on paperwork is that you used to be in prison, you used to be on drugs, yada, yada, yada. What it says on paper is that he's been in the custody of his father, and that's where it needs to be. So she's hoping that that judge will see things her way and won't necessarily just take her ex's side in it. But uh, Brittany, I'm rooting for you, girl. Hopefully... He don't take full custody, like y'all get half and half or something like that. But Marcelino, you fucked up. You fucked up. Hopefully this is a wake-up call and you know to stay your ass in the stepdaddy lane. Unless you got to step over and do something. Now listen, I can talk because I'm a stepmama my damn self. I have a beautiful stepdaughter. But please believe, when it comes to issues that got to do with her mama and her daddy, I stay in a stepmama's place where a stepmom is supposed to stay and step in if and when I ever have to. But see, I ain't never had to do that because my husband handles the business like he's supposed to. We getting all into my personal business. I ain't even trying to do any of that. But that's where it ended from there. Hopefully on the next episode, things go Brittany's way. Cross my fingers for you, girl. Moving right along from them. Y'all, so Clinton Tracy. It's 7.23 p.m. They were supposed to renew their vows at 7 p.m. Production gets to the chapel and Clint is nowhere to be found. Tracy is there. She says she makes a joke about drugs. Clint gets pissed and he gets out of the car and he leaves. Next thing you know, 30 minutes later, bitch, this fool Clint come walking down the street looking a hot ass goddamn mess. Him and Tracy immediately gets to arguing, cutting each other deep with some insults I might add. She says, well, why don't you just go and go away? You was going to leave. You never wanted to do this in the first place. He said, well, at least I came back 30 minutes later and not two weeks later. She said, well, that's probably because you couldn't find a ride like me. He said, yeah, because probably because I didn't have to suck dick for a ride like you. I mean, they were just going at it. I said, oh, wait a minute now. The insults I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. They were going at it. Arguing. Just, just. Y'all, this shit was stupid. It was stupid. They argue for about another 20, 30 minutes out there. Then the Uber pulls up. Tracy act like she finna get in the Uber. She halfway in, halfway out. Still arguing with Clint. They going back and forth. Then she gets up out the Uber. She goes back and talks with Clint. She like, are we gonna do this or what? He was like, no, because you didn't apologize. And she was like, okay, well, I'm sorry. He said, well, that's all I wanted you to say in the first place. They kiss, make up, 
and they on their way to the chapel because they in love and they finna get married. I'm sitting here looking at this whole scene like, y'all, what the fuck just happened and how quick did it happen? Did I miss something? I even had to go back and rewind it. Like, did I miss something? Did it happen that fast? Yes, it actually happened that fast, y'all. And that was the end of Clinton Tracy. They're going to the chapel and they're gonna get married. Move right along from them, y'all. Y'all, so Andrew and Lamar. <laughs> Andrew and Lamar, okay, hold on first, time out. Lamar in his 5,100 layers of clothes, y'all, I can't take it. I see they in Utah, I see it's a lot of snow, but then he from LA, he ain't used to all that snow. This nigga had on a shirt with another shirt, with a hoodie, with a jacket, with his lokes, with his cap, with some jeans, probably had some tights on under them, with probably two layers of socks and then some boots, probably had some shoes on inside the boots. He was ready, he was ready, he was TTG. He was ready for whatever, you know? Frosty the Snowman ain't had shit on him. He was goddamn ready. Him and Andrea sitting and arguing about every little thing, everything, you can tell. But you know what? I hate to say this. Andrea was annoying the shit out of me in this episode. She was annoying the crap out of me. So she's going to go have some lunch or whatever with her homegirl, Michelle, right? Michelle was the only other black chick that was there, you know, in Utah, as far as I could see on the screen, that's a homegirl, her bestie boy, whatever. So they meet and they having lunch or whatever, right? And so this half of Andrea then already took it upon herself to call her kids school to see if she can get them re-enrolled, then already put down on a deposit on a rental house, and then contacted Lamar's PO to see if he can get paroled out to goddamn Utah. Bitch, you're crazy. You are crazy. This man was locked down for 10 years and you just gonna go behind his back. No, he was locked down for 18 years. You just gonna take it amongst yourself to go and snatch that man's little bit of freedom up from him and do that? Are you crazy, girl? Her friend, Michelle, Michelle, I, you know, you a good friend because you was telling her, right, you know, she was like, look here, what you doing, girl? You doing some crazy shit. Like, why would you do that? This heifer, Andrea, has his debit card, his birth certificate, and his ID. She really holding him hostage, y'all. She for real, for real holding him hostage. Saying that eventually he'll like, he'll begin to like Utah. She can already see he's starting to fall in love with Utah. So she's just taking it a step further and going ahead and making the decision for him to go ahead and get him set up out here in Utah, y'all. She, y'all. Y'all. Y'all, so finally, Andrea's meeting up with Lamar, right? She's telling Lamar, you know, hey, look, um, I just want to see where your head is at with this whole Utah thing because I'm excited and I'm excited, you know, I'm excited for us to move here, yada, yada, yada. He's like, you can be excited all you want to, but uh, I'm not moving to Utah. I'm staying in California. And she was like, well, plan is already in motion. I have to put the deposit down to the rental house today. Um, the kids are already on their way down here, and um, I've already talked with your PO. Let your PO know, so your PO is going to be okay with you paroling here to Utah. And um, I got your birth certificate and your ID and your debit cards anyway, so you can't go nowhere. This nigga Lamar like, bitch, you what? He goes, looks all up in his shit, sees that the heifer got all his shit. He like, you know this some crazy bitch shit, right? She like, Lamar, why would you talk to me like that? No, bitch, why would you do some crazy shit like that? This man has been locked up for 10 years. You done seen cool, calm, collected Lamar. You don't know what loped out gangster set trip and banging Lamar can do. You don't want, I don't want to see that side for you, for him. You know what I'm saying? So don't do that. This heifer goes, runs, locks herself in the damn bathroom, starts crying. Why would you do this? I don't understand. Y'all, on the next episode, somehow or another, he gets her to come up out the bathroom or whatever. He ends up getting his shit running up out the door. I don't know if he got in his car, ran and left, whatever the situation was. But y'all, Andrew, you on some crazy shit, for real. Some real crazy shit. And I feel bad for you, girl. Like, girl, girl. And then, I don't know if y'all caught that part, but 
when she told him, like, you know, uh, well, I'm going to be here in Utah, and then whatever, he was like, well, you can be in Utah, and I'm going to be in California, and then finally I'll be free. Like, bitch, he don't really want to be with you. I'm having a feeling he really don't want to be with you. Because, first of all, everything that y'all do, like, y'all constantly bickering and arguing over everything. And then, in my opinion, just watching it, it's like she's beating this man over the head with her Book of Mormon Bible. Like, she's steady telling him stuff about the Lord will do this for you, the Lord will do that which i get it trust me i'm strong in my faith and all of that but the last thing i'm gonna do is beat somebody over the head with a dog on what my religion is and what i feel and this that, and the other hell no nah, especially you no know, when i sin all the goddamn time too the lord knows my heart and he knows i'm the last person be going trying to beat somebody over the head and andrea girl he tells her what does it say in the bible uh no he don't tell her that that was um lizzie i'm getting ahead of myself y'all but anyways that was the end of Andrea and Lamar, y'all. Hopefully, they can work that shit out, but um, I don't foresee them being together too much longer. I don't see it. I don't see it. Y'all, so Scott and Lizzie. So, Charlene done went out and bought some drug tests, right? She bought two drug tests, one for Scott, one for Lizzie. Now, Lizzie tells Scott, I can pee on the drop of a dime, nigga. I was locked up for 10 years. It don't take nothing. Boop, I can produce some piss for you like that. Now, Scott is stalling, claiming that he can't pee, right? And so, Lizzie, mind you now, the whole time Lizzie still got on this damn bathrobe the whole damn time. Lizzie's like, come on, we finna go in the bathroom. I'm finna help you pee. She takes Scott in the bathroom. She's sitting on the side of the tub. Y'all, Scott over the toilet with his little Peter Whacker out, <laughs> trying to pee. She turns on the water, trying to get the water to run to get this man pee. Finally, he like, you know, fuck it, I can't go, I can't go. So she's like, look, you got two options. Either you can pee in this cup and you can take the test, or you can be real with me, you can tell me the truth and tell me what's going on. Y'all, Scott closes the door and tries to whisper. He's like, all right, I got a problem. I've been on and off of this shit for a couple years, and, and I need some help. Like, you know, just please help me. Help me. You know, I was there for you. You know, I need you to there, be there for me. He breaks down. You know, he tells her, like, look, I, I, I can't do this alone. I'm afraid of losing you. I'm afraid of losing everything. I'm afraid of losing this. I'm afraid of losing that. And so she's like, Scott, you could have been real with me the whole time. Who else? could better understand you than a former drug addict them that damn self right and so lizzie's point of view is i could go back to prison my nigga like if they come over here kick the door down they find some dope who you think they're gonna take to jail they're gonna take me to jail nigga not you i'm the one on goddamn parole not you and so she's like if not that i could relapse and i don't want to go back down that road and i completely and totally understand lizzie's point of view I'm sorry, I can help you from a distance, but actually being there in your house? No, hell no. No, because then I can lose my goddamn freedom. Now, ain't nobody got time for that. So Lizzie tells him, you know, she got to think about it, whatever, right? Because she's like, you know, all of this shit is just too much. You laying this on me. Even his homegirl, Charlene, was like, you know, Scott, you could have told me. I'm right here. He was like, I'm afraid of losing you. I'm afraid of losing everything again and not having nobody. She's like, but Scott, I've been here the whole time. Why would I leave you now? I've been here the whole time. Scott just... He a fucking mess. So then he tries to guilt Lizzie into being there for him. He's like, nah, you, because she was telling him, you know, I need some time to think about it. I'll be back tomorrow. He's like, nah, you ain't coming back. You ain't going to come back. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, Liz, um, Lizzie's like, Scott, look here. Look, this is a lot on me. I need some time to think about this shit. I don't know what the hell you expected to goddamn happen. You was afraid of losing me then. Like, Give a bitch some time to think. You might lose me now. Like, hold on, motherfucker. Wait. So, y'all, it's the next day. Lizzie come back, bitch. Lizzie look cute. She had a little crop top on, her little daisy deuce with a little stomach and little love handles out. Bitch, I ain't mad for you, Lizzie. You know what I'm saying? I think you need to be covered up because, you know what I'm saying, that's just me. That's just my opinion because, you know what I'm saying, that's just my opinion. But, hey, you do you, boo-boo. You was working it. Okay? I ain't mad at you. But, her and Scott immediately get to arguing, right? 
Lizzie's like, look, you lied to me this whole time. You could have jeopardized my freedom, yada, yada, yada. He's like, well, if all you had to do was come back to the house with me, if you would have come back to the house with me, then none of this would have ever happened. And she's like, well, I just need you to admit that you did it. He was telling her, like, I just picked up the, the pipe. I didn't pick up the needle. Thank God I didn't pick up the needle. Like, damn, Scott, she was doing the needle too back in the day. God damn, bruh. But finally, Lizzie tells him, like, look, I do not want to be with you. This nigga gets mad, goes in the house and starts pouting. And then the episode ends from there. But it seems like on the next episode, I don't know what makes this motherfucker snap. But y'all, he pull out a bat and gets a beating on a goddamn Jeep that's outside. Throw a wad of cash at her. And she like, what the fuck, Scott, bitch, had that been me? I'm like, what the fuck, Scott, what you, this goddamn money, shit. That's just me, though, hey. Bitch could use some ends. But y'all, that was the end of Love After Lockup slash Life After Lockup. I hope y'all enjoyed this review because the episode was good. Was it watchworthy? Absolutely. Just because it was entertaining from the beginning to the end. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this episode review. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, and I will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala!